In this video, I want to walk us through expected return and standard deviation, looking at all the steps and working it in Excel. On this screen, you're seeing the data you would be given, states of the economy, the probability of those states occurring, and the expected return on the asset or investment in those states. And these are the two equations that we need, expected return and standard deviation. Actually, we calculate variance since standard deviation is the square root of variance. Note. These equations are for expectational data. The data are presented as a probability distribution. If this were a sample of historical data, we would use slightly different equations which take into account using average return rather than expected return in the standard deviation equation. An important thing to remember, especially with standard deviation, order of operations, P-E-M-D-A-S. First, we look at parentheses, what's inside the parens. Then we handle exponents, then multiply, divide, and finally add and subtract. We're going to work through this example. First step, you have to calculate the expected return. First thing we do is the multiply, divide. There are no parens, no exponents. We're going to multiply across probability 0.15 times the expected return in that state, minus 12.50 equals minus 1.88. Repeat that for all states of the economy. That takes care of the multiply part of the equation. Second step, add those values we just calculated. That's the summation sign, where n is the number of states of the economy, and there's our expected return, 2.75. Now we're going to start on standard deviation, and this is where order of operations is really important. First thing we need to do is calculate the deviation. Look at the formula. We need what's inside the parens. The expected return in each state of the economy minus the overall expected return that we found in step two. The values we calculated in step one are grayed out now since we don't need them anymore. The first value is going to be minus 1250 minus 275, then minus 8.5 minus 275 all the way down. The next step is to square those numbers. Negative 1525 squared is a positive number. Remember, when you square a number, the result is positive. We're handling the exponent, the next item in order of operations, so we square each one of the deviations. In step five, we multiply the squared deviation by the probability. Step six, the summation sign. We add up that column. That result is the variance. We want the standard deviation, so in the seventh step, we take the square root of the variance and we get 9.86 as our standard deviation. Now that's showing you all the numbers. Let's work our way through the calculations using Excel. You would follow the same steps solving for standard deviation in your calculator. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply across and copy it down. Place your cursor on the right corner and drag it down. To add them up, use AutoSum, the summation sign. Place your cursor in E11 and click on AutoSum. It will default to the range of cells directly above the cell your cursor is on. And in this case, that's what we want. So hit return. There's our expected return of 2.75. Now I'm over here in the standard deviation. The first one is the minus 1250 minus our expected return from step two, the 275. And I want to freeze that. Copy that down. To square these in Excel, use the caret. And copy that down. Finally, we're going to multiply these times the probability. And copy that down. Sum these up using auto sum again. We have our variance. To get standard deviation, use the square root function. And we have our square root, 9.86. Following the order of operations hierarchy, especially in the standard deviation equation, is critical to finding the correct result. We've worked our way through expected return and standard deviation step by step, and we've gone through an example. An important thing to remember. If you're asked to solve for standard deviation, you're probably going to be presented with data that looks like this. Probability, states of the economy, and expected return in each state. The first thing you have to do is solve for expected return, since you need that to solve for variance and standard deviation. And when solving for standard deviation, I cannot emphasize enough how important order of operations is. 
If you start inside the parens, then handle the exponent, then multiply, divide, finally add, subtract, and last step, take the square root, you'll get the correct answer.